Hello students, welcome back to our continuation of uh, first example in chapter two. Now just to point out, we've, we've drawn the feasible, we've drawn the constraints. I'm going to change colors to uh, green. Um, why have we colored in this section here? Well, this section is known as the feasible region based on the constraints. The constraints are less than the black line or less than the red line. So the blue section is less than both of them. We cannot have a possible solution out here. This would not be feasible. For example, X1 or X2 would be maybe 25 and X1 might be something like 5 and that's not going to work within our feasible region. If x2 is 25, for example, this point here, and x1 might be, say, 5, if you put that into our first constraint, x1 is 5, so we've got 5 plus 2 times, for example, 25. That's more than the amount of labor hours we have in a day. So this, anything above the black line, is not feasible. Anything out here is not feasible as well. Anything beyond that region which is noted as for both, for all constraints, would not be feasible. This section down here, same thing. It, it would be feasible for the labor constraint, our first constraint, but not possible or feasible for the red material constraint. So only anything in this blue would be feasible. Now, our possible answer, let's go with yellow, we could choose a point right there. Maybe that's something like, I don't know, maybe 15 and 15 each. It's just not efficient. We want to maximize our profits, which means we want to go this way in terms of the number of items we produce for X1 and X2. We want to go out as far as possible, but we are bound or restricted by our constraints, which is going to be the boundary of this black line until it hits the intersection of the black and red, and then it's going to be the boundary of the red line. So let's go back here and let's go in, let's use, yeah, let's use this color here. So we have three possible solutions. We have this point here, which we will call A. We have this point here, the intersection of those two points, which is B, and we have the intersection of the, the uh, point the, um, when x1 is 30 and x2 is 0. Now why are we picking these actual points instead of say somewhere anywhere on that black line there or anywhere on that red line? Well, basically it's telling us that if we um, move along that black line further away um, more x1 from this point we are actually going to be increasing profits until we hit this point and then we have to change um, directions. So what we can do is for each of these points, let's go maybe black here because it's more visible, each of these points is going to have a, a coordinates for x1 and x2, which then we can put back into our into the objective function and solve the answer. So at point A, it's clear that x1 equals 0, which is my memory serves me correct. Yeah, I need the paper. X1 is the number of bowls. X2 is exactly 20. So we put that back into our objective function up here. We have 40 times 0 plus 50 times 100. So 40 times 0 plus 50 times 20 is going to equal 1,000. So that's our profit if we were to produce 0 and 20. Um, <clears throat> we're going to change to point C first because it's easy to determine the coordinates at point C. X1 is 30 and X2 is 0. So putting that back into that objective profit function we have 40 times 30 plus um, 50 
times zero. So this gives us 1,200. More profits. More profit than we, if we were producing a point A. So this is basically saying that if we were to um, move from A to point C, we would gain, we would increase our profits. So if we were to um, increase our production of bowls and decrease our production of um, mugs, we would actually um, um, gain more profit. Now for point B, it's going to be somewhere around maybe, what would that be, maybe 25 or so X1 and approximately maybe 10, you know, right around there, X2 um, or um, mugs. But we're going to find the exact coordinates by using, uh, we have the equation of two straight lines and we need basically the intersection or when these two straight lines, those two constraints are equal. So I'm going to go to a new sheet. I'm going to <coughs> write the <coughs> two equations again. We have 1x1 plus 2x2. Instead of saying less than equal to, I'm going to change that to an equality sign because we are talking about being on that um, line somewhere. So that's our first constraint. Second constraint, our equation of that second is straight, 4x1 plus 3x2 equals, because it's somewhere on that point, it's somewhere on that boundary, it's going to equal 120. Now there's numerous ways of solving for this. We have two unknowns, x1 and x2, and we have two equations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite equation 1. Um, I'm going to rewrite equation 1 to, to, set, to isolate x1. x1 equals 40 minus 2x2. All I've done is, is put 2x2 on the other side of the, of the uh, equation, of the equality. So x1 equals 40 minus 2x2. I'm going to then substitute this x1 value right into that second constraint. So 4 times x1, x1 now equals 40 minus 2x2 plus 3x2 equals 120. Solving this through, 40, or 4 times 40, 60, 160, 4 times negative 2 is negative 2x2s, plus 3x2s equals 120. Um, getting all the x2s on one side, we have negative 8 plus 3, so we have negative 5x2, and we're going to bring this 160 over to the other side, so it's 120 minus 160, it's going to be minus 40, x2 dividing by negative 5, x2 gives us 8. So we know what x2 equals. We can then put that back into our first equation, which was 1x1 plus 2x2, which x2 equals 8, and that equals 40. So 1x1 plus, oops, 16 equals 40, x1 equals 40 minus 16, or 24. So those are that's the coordinates for point C, or, sorry, point B. x1 equals 24, x2 equals 8. We can solve the um, profit function. by substituting those values in for x1 and x2. So 40, x1, or 40 times 24, plus 50, x2, x2 equals 8. So 40 times 24, memory serves me correctly, that's 960, plus 400. Add those together and we get 1360. So our profit, if we go back to our first uh, page here, our profit is maximized at this point, point B. We are uh, maximizing our profit if we produce 24 
bowls, <clears throat> and eight mugs. That will give us a daily profit of 1,360. So the optimal solution Just going to write this in here. X1 equals 24, X2 equals 8, and our profit is going to be 1360. Let's see what else we should um, <clears throat> mention here. The rest of the PowerPoint notes which I provided kind of run this through as well. Um, <clears throat> introduces another concept called Slack variables, but I'm going to um, introduce that with, um, with a second example that we'll get to after this video.